Ponderosa is a name that might bring back some happy childhood memories because for decades it was a popular destination for parents to take their children out for an affordable steak dinner. Do you know those fancy steakhouses with a formal atmosphere where everyone's dressed up eating premium cuts of meat? Well, years ago that was pretty much the standard and Ponderosa found success by being almost the exact opposite. The kids like the western cowboy theme, the upbeat environment, and the soft serve ice cream while parents were attracted to the grand buffet and the low prices. Seriously, they were only charging like a few dollars for a steak dinner. It was really a compelling option for families who were maybe a little strapped for cash but still wanted to have a fun traditional dining experience. Let me know if you have ever been there with your family and I think that may be the case for many of you considering there used to be almost 750 Ponderosa restaurants in the United States mostly concentrated within the Midwest. From the 1970s all the way into the 1990s they were considered the biggest steakhouse chain in the country and unfortunately they have been steadily declining ever since. In 2008, their parent company filed for bankruptcy, revealing in court documents that they had assets totaling one to ten million dollars and debts totaling 100 to 500 million. That is a wide range but a terrible ratio and things have continued falling from there. I cannot confirm exactly how many are remaining today but they have definitely closed most of their restaurants to a point where I would guess that the total is maybe even in single digits. Probably around 1-2% to of their former size, which I would categorize as a major downfall. So in this video, I want to talk about the decline of what used to be one of the most popular, beloved restaurants in the country, Ponderosa. In 1963, one of the most popular shows on television was NBC's western themed series, Bonanza. One of the actors on it, Dan Blocker, who played the character Eric Haas Cartwright, started a western themed steakhouse that was named after the show. The restaurant was called Bonanza, so right away it had name recognition, it was being promoted by one of the stars, and it offered affordable prices, so it quickly started gaining traction and turned into a small chain. In 1965, only two years later, Dan Lasseter, Norm Weiss, and Charles Kleps, three businessmen, started a new chain of steakhouses called Ponderosa that I think you'll agree was heavily inspired by the success of that Bonanza chain. They they offered similar low prices made possible by employing a small staff and serving lower grade meats. They adapted the kid friendly western theme, even the name itself. Ponderosa was a word heavily associated with the TV show to a point where the opening credits would start with a picture of a map highlighting the Ponderosa Ranch where the family lived. I guess that NBC later aired reruns of the show under the name Ponderosa and in 2001 there was briefly a prequel show called Ponderosa. So you can see how establishing a competing restaurant with such a similar concept would create a rivalry between them. I think it's funny that early on Ponderosa neglected to trademark their name so the Bonanza restaurants rushed in to take it before they realized it. But then Bonanza had also neglected to trademark their own name, so then Ponderosa took it in retaliation, and then in the end they just traded the trademarks with each other. Over the next decade, Ponderosa was ultra aggressive in franchising and potentially even overextending themselves by financing new locations. By the end of the 1970s, they were practically a sensation, becoming the biggest steakhouse in the country with over $300 million in system wide sales coming from over 500 restaurants. The 1980s, however, is when everything started getting a little crazy. Now, I think it'll be useful to outline the different owners of Ponderosa Steakhouse because each one of them has had their own impact on the business. The first owners were obviously those three businessmen who had started it, and technically Lasseter left the company and it had a public stock offering, so there were technical changes early on, but nothing too significant as far as I could tell until the 1980s. At that point, Ponderosa was starting to show signs of trouble and there are so many potential reasons behind it. They were not updating and renovating the restaurants like they probably should have been so everything was starting to feel old and outdated. The country's food preferences were evolving to preferred seemingly healthier options like chicken or fish so maybe a restaurant specializing in steak was not as attractive and they weren't doing enough to shift their focus toward those other offerings. I want to be clear that they did have other menu items of course but they have always been viewed by almost everyone as 
a steakhouse. Economic conditions and changes in the manufacturing industry were causing high unemployment rates throughout the Midwest at the time, where most of their restaurants were located. The rising popularity of color television had led to a decline in the popularity of TV westerns, so you can argue that the entire cowboy theme was becoming less attractive and outdated. Not to mention the rising competition from other low-priced steakhouses, specifically Sizzler, was dividing the market and drawing away customers. Whatever the reason, earnings were down, and it left the company in a vulnerable position where other companies kept trying to take it over. In 1980, to start off the decade, there was a big takeover attempt, where Ponderosa had to spend a lot of money fighting it off and buying back their own stock, worsening the situation. A few years later, Bonanza, the restaurant company, tried to take it over with a $155 million offer that, again, they rejected and had to spend money fighting against. That right there is when Ponderosa put together this whole turnaround plan that involved a new president, reinvestments, and opening hundreds of new locations, mostly in the South. Well, all of that changed when Ponderosa was successfully acquired by Asher Edelman, who had a history of hostile takeovers and what was essentially a leveraged buyout that added over $200 million in debt to the company. I do not see how this possibly helped the situation, nor do I think he was too happy with his decision because it was quickly resold to what I would consider to be an unexpected buyer, Metro Media. A little background here, Metro Media was owned by John Kluge. He had recently taken his media company private and then sold most of its assets, including six TV stations to Rupert Murdoch that were then used to launch the Fox TV network. Yeah, there's a lot there, but according to Forbes, those deals made him the richest man in America, a title that he held for three years before losing it to Bill Gates. Now, with all of this extra time and money that he had just acquired, he was looking for a new business direction, and amazingly, the one he decided on was reasonably priced steakhouses. It's pretty wild. He started off by purchasing Ponderosa, but remember, he was diving into a new industry on a large scale, so shortly after, he bought the company that owned Steak and Ale and Bennigan's, Butter's favorite restaurant, and maybe more notably, he bought Bonanza. There are twists and turns all over this. Bonanza had just tried to buy Ponderosa, and now Ponderosa was practically buying Bonanza. And that gave the franchisees the opportunity to convert the Bonanza restaurants into Ponderosa's, being the bigger, more recognizable name. You could say how the situation might feel promising. The richest man in the country taking a special interest in these steakhouses, bringing them together and investing in their success. But sadly, I don't think any of it helped very much. A lot of those issues that were slowing them down in the 1980s persisted and were even magnified into the 1990s. Sizzler, for example, had expanded their buffet and soon after took the title from Ponderosa as the new biggest steakhouse chain in the country after they had held it for the past 20 years. Plus, all of these different owners and leaders and strategies proved to be counterproductive and aggravated the franchisees who had to keep making changes based on these new directions. It is believed that John Kluge invested over $1 billion into all of these steakhouses and never really saw a return from it, just ended up losing money. All of it continued to go downhill, and then when the recession happened in 2008, that's when they were forced into bankruptcy. In July of that year, the Steak and Ale and Bennigan's part of the business filed for bankruptcy in what was reported as one of the largest restaurant industry bankruptcies ever, and then three months later, the Ponderosa and Bonanza part of it, the budget steakhouses, also filed for bankruptcy. It was the same year, by the way, that other major buffet chains did the same thing, so tough times for buffets and steakhouses almost across the board. The following year, they emerged from the bankruptcy under the new name Homestyle Dining LLC. At that point, there were about 200 Ponderosa locations and 50 Bonanzas. I have to point out that the president of the company said, we believe the future is bright for the Ponderosa and Bonanza Steakhouse brands. However, being able to look back on the situation, I would respectfully have to disagree because over the next eight years, they slowly closed about half of those restaurants without any real signs of recovery. In 2017, ownership of the brand changed for the final time when they were bought by Fat Brands for $10.5 million. Fat Brands is most famously the owner of Fat Burger, and this was an attempt to expand their presence in the industry with additional brands, but I have to say, $10 million is an embarrassingly low price 
price for what used to be two of the biggest restaurant chains in the country. That price was for Ponderosa and Bonanza. Right when they bought it, they expressed plans to develop a new, smaller scale, fast casual version of Ponderosa, but I haven't seen any evidence of that becoming a reality. They have since continued closing more restaurants to a point where there are not many of them remaining. If you live in the Midwest, you may still have one within a reasonable distance, but it's unlikely and unclear how long even those will still be there. I truly don't know what else to say here. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Ponderosa has become a depressing story. It is a once beloved brand that for multiple reasons has slowly vanished away from American culture. Let me know in the comments, do you have any memories of going to Ponderosa Steakhouse and what were the circumstances? Were you a child, a parent, was it as a family or were you alone? I'm going to guess that it was a while ago because we're almost at a point where the older you are, the more likely you are to have memories of going there. What did you like or dislike about it and do you miss it? Do you feel like you would still be going there on a regular basis if given the opportunity? Also, let me know if you agree with my reasons behind the decline or if you think there's more to it that I failed to mention and if you think there is any realistic chance of Ponderosa rebuilding. Personally, I would have to say that is extremely unlikely without some kind of major developments, but maybe that's okay. Some things aren't meant to last forever and Ponderosa might just be a concept that was more fitting in a different time. So any other thoughts you have about Ponderosa, Bonanza, the restaurant or the TV show or any of the other brands I mentioned in this video, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.